So, just continuing from the last lecture, where we are talking about uh, how the transformation is more sustained, it requires some assertion of will or at least a decision to transform and uh, it requires a continuous hammering vis-a-vis -vis change which is temporary and just keeps happening in the pressure of external circumstances. How the basic needs for harmony, how the uh, stepping out of self in empathy, how the need can create a will, but will can in itself decide how to uh, act and behave. And this in turn forms a huge uh, feedback loop. Uh, so, what and who decides to transform and who decides to continue depends on that those moments of cognitive dissonance where people need some release either through buffers, which can give them a comfort and just decrease the pressure or people who suffer intense pain uh, and conflictual pressure and decide to step out of themselves and really move on to uh, do it. Uh, so, in this next half an hour, we will try to just look at the whole thing and maybe by this time you would have already and we ended up with I asked you to look at whether resilience is good for transformation or it is bad. Uh, we can discuss it in our discussion session. So, uh, this is just a hypothetical thing world wide web. So, this is the world, this is you brain, body and mind and this is the interface whether this is real or notional. We talked about this, the interface is real or it is your mind which is creating that meaning which is the source of this interface. So, you are moved with thought, uh, but as the thought progressed and we did not see the world changing. So, we again went back to what is the basis of us emotion, we know all this we have seen it. Play in, in, interestingly is, is considered as a primary emotion by some and secondary guilt, shame, violence, agitation, maybe love. So, where lust is a primary emotion, love is a higher complex emotion. So, people want to handle this without handling this. This is a cartoon, any guess what it is depicting? It is depicting I can feel your pain. Empathy can also be a trigger for transformation. So, it is not only a reverse thing that empathy sends a need for altruism and sacrifice which is inbuilt in brain. We have just discussed it in the last lecture. As man has accrued violence, it has also accrued altruism. So, when somebody sees somebody in pain, they want to do something and that can also be a trigger of transformation as it happened with him. We all know him. He was kept in a, uh, a very, very protected environment because when he was born, some astrologer said I, he will become a, uh, a Chakravarti Samrat, an emperor, all conqueror emperor or he will become a, a sannyasi, a ascetic. Uh, so, his father took care that he does not get to see the miseries of life and he was kept in all comfort and married. But one day Buddha saw a old man death and some ill person and that night he left to find out the meaning of life. Now, this is the story part part history part myth, but look at it he was 29 or 30 when he left home. It is very unlikely that he would not have seen any misery or death or old age around him. I mean no amount of seclusion would have been possible to he was a, otherwise a healthy young man, but that day when he saw the whole thing changed. So, there must have been 
maybe maybe what we were talking that this triggered the whole thing which made him push himself to go and find out the answers and then obviously came back and taught people. So, he was talking about so the possibility that maybe he was just seeing and just brush off in his own he, because there was a lot of harmony in his head as far as material things were uh, we do not have any record of it with, that he always felt uncomfortable with the um, misery around and he was not happy with his he was living a normal life till one day. So, maybe he would have seen all this like we all see and just brush off we see hungry people around uh, we see people begging on the road but we just move on some day it hurts us some day it makes us more depressed those are the days when the defense mechanisms when those buffers which help you designate ki, no no it is destiny and poor what can I do I can give you some money that is not empathy some day that poor person really hits you some day you realize that the amount of food we order in a restaurant is much more than we can consume and it will take away snatch some food from somebody else and that day you transform. So, it is empathy or what Buddha said compassion there may be just two sides do not think I am giving you a sermon because I told you why I am talking of all this con things in concept of transformation which is beneficial for most. I am not talking of the transformation which is destructive I could, I could have talked about Hitler also and Osama bin Laden also they also transformed themselves. Let us I will talk about it in the next lecture pause it the right question. So, what is the focus? the focus of transformation whether it is good or bad is resource activation. When people transform they have to actually activate the resources from within and decide whether they are really on to getting onto the mundane problem or do some heroics. This is a slide which is appears to be a bit of intrusion, but look at it India got freedom in 1947 and any psychiatrist would vouch at that this point of the time the anxiety levels of the country or all over the world they are very high. Now, the two thought processes which have developed I am just placing the whole thing into a larger context western thought process is more logical rational cause effect linear history eastern has always been whether it is China or India cyclical intuitive. So, are these two thought processes west is west and east is east in the process of changing leading to a lot of this cultural anxiety. Now, this anxiety itself like Buddha felt it in a individual he was seeing world normally same thing, but suddenly one day it hit hit him and he went on to us just activated his resources left the mundane problems and actually resorted on a sort of heroics of venturing for 6 years of uh, for meditation and very very uh, strict and almost uh, tortured existence of uh, it happens at a societal level also. These two thought processes now in a world globalized world lot of people live in this hinterland, but people who are born in western culture and people who are born in eastern culture they may not be so much different as now because the world is more globalized in a post colonial and a post liberal world the whole thing has fallen into place um, almost um, similar type of thought process, but the core what has gone into the cultural memes and genetics is still different. So, this could be an anxiety this could be an anxiety in the cultures. So, the big question also comes so now when we know that there is a cognition there is a emotion and there is um, uh, empathy and there is unconscious need which can be altered by will changes happen ok. Somebody has suffered an intense pain does not have a buffer does not have a decides to change and does not go into 
um, finding out escape routes for his uh, the troubles which he is facing, what does he do? You are preparing for your IS exams and you take money from your father and go to some coaching and you while away time there, do not get selected and obviously guilt and shame as they come, they hit you, what do you do with it? If you find an explanation, an explanation for all this and try to pass the blame game, the chances are things will not transform. You have to hit it and in that moment of failure, failure can be a big, big trigger to transformation. In fact, most of the time because it generates guilt and shame on one hand and it generates insecurity, insecurity, guilt, failure. So, it escape, face. In this case, this will bring some change temporarily. This can lead to transformation, but now that you are at this point suppose, how do you transform? What is the need for transformation? We know why transformation is needed for the benefit and harmonious existence of self and others or to destroy others and self either way. How? Whether the, this capacity of changing of like I, if you remember we are talking about a story making this short bursts of anecdotes are woven into a story. Similarly, the short bursts of change which keep happening in direction can be coalesced into one big transformation, but still the mind has to be trained or the man can respond to an example or lesson from another time frame. Do all transformations happen in isolation within an individual or society and have no connections with history or people can still go back in those moments and instead of passing the buck to God or religion or um, astrology or stars, look at people who were in similar situations of emotional and cognitive conflicts and they change themselves. If it is possible, if it is possible, then the moral issues can be separated from the context. That means, that if somebody at some point of time has transformed himself and has a model which can be examined and not only examined, practiced in our time, in our life, then whether it was right, wrong, good, bad is a contextual thing. So, it should be separated from the context because that right, wrong, good, bad would have been the impact. But if the process was right, then the chances of that process becoming apt in some situation, uh, that possibility is very high. So, it is the more about the process and the process I think can be learned from anybody. Again, like you have like if you are at a point where you want to change and your mind we you have been escapist, but you said no I do not want to escape and I want to uh, transform myself. And uh, so, whatever what will you look at transform into what and how you look at whatever conditioning has gone into your head, but history is also part of your conditioning. You can look at uh, people who have successfully handled it. When I am saying successfully, it does not mean that everything what they did was successful. They would have been successful in what whatever mode they wanted. So, 
again I have I am when I say verses I am not saying I am not pitting it against there is a corporate style which has emerged in life these days. A corporate style is powerpoints, how to laugh, how to parent, how to do this, how to do that, how to bring our inner transformation, how to do this managerial thing, leadership. So, there is so much of it, but sometime I doubt it whether all that which is being done has a real intent of transformation or it is it is a change which they want incremental change. So, a change can appear as transformation over time by being incremental change small changes, but these changes have a risk their goals are different. more success oriented. Whereas, this may require a inner change in cognitive emotional framework. So, here we, we take almost a diversion a fork we have talked about the societal changes, but here we are talking about taking corporate style change incremental changes materialistically oriented gain oriented forget that we are talking about individual transformation. Now, this Indian style perfectly suits this inner transformation which is more sustained and may change this and that is the narrative, the story and there is a wisdom in the story. Some of you who lived with grandparents or maybe I do not know how much it happens in metros, but people do not have time, but in good old times there was always a story weaving which was going on. It was, it was like uh, anything which was taught anything which was told always had to be woven in a story and in the night you would listen to something from mythology and everything was a story. Partly the sheen of the story has been taken away by science, I let me confess I am a man from science, but still let me tell you uh, because uh, everything has been very, very that, that abstract romanticization has been taken off. So, everything has an explanation but those explanations are not full. So, the new generation and the young people who have not been told so many stories in their childhood want to just understand things, but if you understand a major part of emotion is gone, but emotion is the one which is pushing your unconscious needs and making you survive. So, one major force of your life which decides has been ignored and the learned part which you may believe or not believe gets into half the explanation. So, you are living like giving a huge gap of not handling your emotions and that is the crux of the misery and that is what is required in transformation. So, Indian style was look at lot of Sufis and they have anecdotes, Buddha used to keep telling stories, modern age gurus whether they have a borrowed knowledge uh, will still keep telling stories, everyone wants to tell a story whether you are a storyteller or not is a different issue. So, one part of the story was biography. So, biography of people whom you who you think Krishna, Buddha, Tagore had a romanticism, Gandhi was like a yogi, but the belief that one can really transform at whatever level of your life, it is not like for a student or a in relationship or public behavior or our in India seems to be transforming, but whether people are really transforming under the uh, dynamic leadership of uh, our prime minister right now 
is uh, next 10 years will tell whether it is just a change because of utilitarian survival techniques or it is a change is a transformation which is um, one has to believe cognitively that it is all in me. Even to understand the biography you need an empathy. So, you do not human beings do not survive with empathy at the end. So, he is the man be the change you wish to see in the world. You know all of you know him Mohandas Gandhi. I bring him in here for the next concluding lectures as a model of transformation and all that we have studied obviously, there was neuroscience was in its very primitive state at that time. Gandhi had not studied neuroscience, uh, maybe he knew of Freud and all that, but obviously, he did not study and left a model for say he was moving in life. Uh, if we one thing which we should understand before talking about him that we are not going to talk about him as a politician, we are not here to discuss politics. Politics as I said is a matter of context, the morality of the context whether politics succeeded or it failed uh, let us not get too much bo bothered about it. Uh, because whatever people take decision in certain circumstances uh, appear to be right and uh, whether they are destructive, Hitler was doing whatever he was doing thinking that he was right, whether it brings destruction or it brings in some sort of uh, solace to people uh, that all is a later issue let us not uh, muddle our head with all that. So, we are not going to talk about politics, we are going to talk about the man. Gandhi the man and I have my reasons for it which I will try to put forward. One that if we talk about Christ or Prophet Muhammad or, um, or Krishna or from our culture or from any other Greek mythology, uh, the Roman mythology or European thing, lot of it would appear as a myth and then you we do not tend to believe myth because it is a more fictional account. Gandhi's history, thousand work, uh, hundred volumes of his written work, not as a as a philosophy or a book, small tidbits of writing, conversations, newspaper. Um, he wrote two or three, four books, but uh, they were not. Uh, they were elucidating his philosophy at that time, which more or less contained and con continuously. He is not very far from our times, temporal proximity. How many years? This is uh, so 67, 69. If we read his life in India, we may not be looking at him too much except for some symbolic things at present. But uh, as Shimon Perez, the Israeli leader, and he he said that Gandhi belongs to future. And every Nobel laureate for peace uh, almost invokes him. If by with some effort we are able to shave off, uh, shave off his uh, uh, politics, we could see one thing which is emerging that he could harmonize life as a whole, and that was the need which I was telling. And he also. You remember we talked about help and treatment and I raised this question whether help should be done in mainstream and Buddha left home to go to a jungle. He renunciated normal life, the responsibilities of normal life and everything to find out the basic question. Gandhi did not run away. He was like an open book in the heat and dust of life. He remained a politician when, when he said that people think I am a saint who is trying to be a politician, but I say I am a politician who is trying to be a saint. And he had opened up his life, anybody could walk in, examine, come out. So, what I am trying to tell you is do not follow him, 
I'm just setting the background to one very specific mode of transformation which he give, which all of us will agree. Don't follow him. Just look at the process which he followed, which we'll talk about it. Look at the transformational skills which he left for us. The whole country followed him in a Pied Piper story. The big, the question which you have to answer is, was it different? Did he have a different genetic makeup? We have no proof. He was like all of us. He had his own share of uh, uh, emotional outburst. He has his own share of it. So, he just did not uh, change. The, he, the change triggered, but if you examine his life with some objectivity, what you will find that all this change were a conscious effort. That gives credence to existence of will. As it gives credence in the case of a sports person who troubles his body to achieve, the girl who had gone up, the, the, the pain which scientists suffer sitting in a lab, anything, a disabled child is struggling to run, all that brings in will. And that is where Gandhi is important because what he did was this developing to transformational skills and harmonizing the life as a whole. This is his premise. This is what Gandhi stood for. Ahimsa, disposition, fearlessness, persistence, turning loss to opportunity, honesty, truth and accountability. We all have this little bit in our, but whether we develop it or not or whether we transform ourselves in not, this is the big question. And above all, he was a master of empathy, human concern. So, he had expanded his consciousness through choosing to be connected to all. And that was a matter of his will and not a matter of just unconscious pressure. Two words which have been uh, uh, mentioned about Gandhi is actuality and mutuality. But we will continue. Gandhi in the last two lectures, because it is important. I am just taking as a model there are other people also. But if you look at this process as in its premise, one thing concern for everybody, harmonized life and connected to the last man in the context of his country. He wanted to connect to the whole world. So, we will end at this and then we will continue talking about Gandhi in the next lecture. Thank you.